Hey, everybody. Have a couple of people on. We'll wait for a few moments to let people sign in, um, get a chance for the connections to go. Tiffany, are you on? Yes, I'm on. Great. Hi, yes, I'm on. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Great. That's good. <laughs> Thanks so much for your help. Yeah, of course, of course. I'm so excited to see everyone today. Yeah, yeah. I suppose we should give a couple, just a minute or two for people, a couple of people to log on. Yeah, that's what I assume too. I, I disabled the waiting room, so uh, everyone who is coming in late will just automatically come in. Oh, great. Great. All right. It's great for you to come in on a, on a Sunday. Uh, Tiffany, where are you coming? Where are you, are you in? Uh, where are you right now? I'm, I'm in New York City. I'm, yeah, um, where in New York? I'm Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's great. And you, where are uh, you coming from? I'm actually, if you can believe it, I'm in Florida. Oh, wow. Yes, we came down uh, with, to stay with some friends, God bless them, uh, in March. Sweet. And we sort of have been here since, since the COVID-19 began, so. Oh, wow. Uh, yes, yes, uh, my, my wife and three kids, so. Wow. Yep. Um, so maybe what I'll do is get started. I'm gonna just give you a brief, I'm gonna share my screen, just give you a brief, um, I have a couple uh, slideshows and videos as introduction to Columbia Grammar Preparatory School, if that makes sense. And, uh, and then we'll take, we'll leave plenty of time for questions about the school, the process, you know, uh, the relationships we have, um, things of that nature, okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, can you make me a co-host by? Yes, I'll do that right now. Okay. So I can just. Okay, sorry. Let me go to your account. All right. So another one of the things we want to keep in mind is, uh, you know, the chat feature while she's doing it uh, is available. If you want to, if you want to just post questions as we go through this um, or please don't hesitate to, uh, to reach out with questions um, as we finish. I'll leave plenty of time for that. Okay. Okay. I think I have, make sure, can everybody, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, um, just please put a thumb up or um, either on your Zoom or if you want to do it in person, just to make sure that we can all see it together. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Thank you. Two thumbs are great. Okay, so I'm gonna, oops. Sorry, just give me one, one quick second to open this up. Screen. Sorry. Thomas, um, does your thing have sound? I'm sorry, is there no sound on yours? No, there's no, there's no audio. Okay, let me try. I don't know why the audio is not working. Okay. 
Let me take to see if I can take this off as the birds. Can you hear me now? I can hear you perfectly, yeah. Okay. Let me just try that one more time. Can you, can you hear the sound now? Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Okay, well, sorry. what's important about education to me is a lot of things. I've been trying. This is a school, but it's so much more than a school. Probably the funnest place you could ever be. You can really look forward to waking up in the morning, however early it is, and going to school. I feel loved every single day when I walk in here. I feel lucky to go here. And that, and that comes from the bottom of my heart. So show me family. The whole goal of the school is to create a comfortable academic community, to find yourself and become who you're supposed to be. For me, what makes a good teacher is that they're fun, but they also teach you. They make learning more interesting for you. Teacher-student relationship is a very core thing about our school. The student to teacher ratio is six to one, and everyone knows everyone. In all honesty, you can talk to about anything. Mr. Rainer, can you have this one? It's not just teachers lecturing at you. They actively try to engage you. And when you know that people are working on you and trying to make you better, there must be like there must be some hope for me. I must be able to get better at this. It's the it's the atmosphere you feel and the sense of community and caring. Even though we're separated into different classes and different grades, I feel it's, I feel like the school is just one big group of people that care for one another. It's a community. It's definitely a place where I feel accepted and where I can try new things. All CGPS students have a sense of drive in them. So show me family. I want to exude tolerance. I want to be successful. You know, I'm just planning to help people. And I'll see when I get there. I'll, cru I'll cross that bridge when I get there. It was the right choice. And I can't envision myself in any other school. I'm going to miss this place. I'm taking this experience with me wherever I go. And that gives me confidence. Okay, so um, I appreciate uh, all you guys being here. I'm here to, to sort of answer some questions about Columbia Crown Preparatory School. To introduce myself, my name's uh, Tom Merrick. I am the middle and prep school admission director at uh, Columbia CGPS. Um, so, you know, I'm here to sort of answer a number of questions, talk to you guys about the school itself. Um, what you can look for, our location. And so, so to give you just some quick backgrounds, we are the, we started, we were um, established in 1764. We are the oldest non-sectarian uh, private school in con continuous existence in America. Um, we are located, um, basically the campus is between 92nd and 94th uh, on the Upper West Side, right, right by Central Park. Um, so a lot of the questions I'm sure you have, and I'm, I'm happy to answer them as we go through, um, in terms of the process, we're still working out as many schools are, how it's, what it's going to look like, um, come September in terms of how we do admission, how we do, um, interviews, how we do tours. Um, we are working on a number of different things to be prepared for all facets and all of of how we uh, how we operate from everybody being back to no one being back and we doing distance continue to do distance learning um my sense is we're going to see a lot more of some virtual tours uh some of these zoom uh interviews things of that nature so you know in terms of the process that uh, you guys will go through it's it's fairly you know a lot of the schools have some some similar uh, pieces to this. So generally, um, we have, there is a inter tour and interview. Again, that might be virtual. Um, there are recommendations that need to be put in place. We need to see transcripts. Um, we do have a great uh, relationship with RISE. Um, so that, that helps from that regard. Testing is another one. I think we're still playing, we're still, uh, discussing. Um, my sense is in, in talking to my head of school, 
uh, my the director of enrollment and uh, management here, um, Carrie Salvatore. You know, some of the things that we're looking to do, I, I I have a feeling will be somewhere in the vicinity for this year of optional testing, and or no testing at all. But again, um, we're still working through that. Um, if you're asking what what entrance exams are accepted, again, fourth grade. We do accept the IC and the SSAT. Those are the two uh, two exams we we work through. So um, effectively, all those the things that I talked about there, we'll, we 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 do take things um, from a holistic perspective. So you know, a lot of people ask, is it you know what test scores do you have to get? What you know what uh, grades? What is, what is it you're looking for? And I really do think Columbia's Columbia preps. Um, vision is to have sort of a holistic and we really key in on um, student centered and, and really st individual student um, education. So we have five core values. They are unity, community, excellence, integrity, and balance. I do think uh, they, they do incorporate who we are. Um, and I think there there's elements of each that you'll see when we go through the admission process. Um, but I do, you know, to, to key on two of them, I do think community and balance are two differentiators for Columbia Prep. I mean, we, community is a huge part of who we are being a school. We are one of the three largest private schools in Manhattan proper. Um, and what that allows us to do is utilize Manhattan, utilize uh, museums, utilize Central Park, since we're there, utilize a number of the different things and even the, the parent body um, that comes across that allows us to use internship programs and for kids, for our students from every industry from, you know, finance to medicine to statistical analysis to fashion to acting uh, and really you name it. So that's uh, sort of a strength of what we do. Um, and so when, but the one thing I'm getting back to sort of balance, we want kids, the social emotional piece of, uh, we always want to check in with how they're doing socially and emotionally. And, and another thing we, we put in place for our kids who come in here is there's a Dean system. And what that means is the Dean is some people might refer to them as advisors, but we don't like to call them advisor because you get advisory in so many different areas at our school that the Dean is while they are an advisor, they're your trusted, you know, confidant, they're your advocate. They're going to keep you on track. They're going to put you in places where, um, in, in terms of like, if you're looking to go off to, to certain universities for certain programs, uh, they're going to make sure you're going to take the courses that uh, will put you in a great in a great spot to get into those those programs at those um, prestigious universities. So um, that said, um, we offer sort of a balance of the full gamut. So we're not a, you know, I like the fact that our you know, our, some of our students, we have one, one of our, I'm just using an example, our salutatorian, she's uh, really into mathematics. She's taken every math course, including, you know, the, the, the full gamut and added an extra course to her, to her schedule every single year she's been here. She's off to go to Stanford to study mathematics. She's also a huge athlete. So it, she's our captain of our basketball team and captain of the, the girls softball team. So, um, She's one example, and then we have the, whereas the valedictorian uh, found his he's off to Harvard to to sing. At, um, he, th there's a, a number of different components he found here, which was uh, creative writing, music, and and sort of the arts. So um, the balance of what we have to to offer here is sort of vast. And once you get to eleventh grade, while there's a choice from ninth to tenth, ninth, tenth, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Once you get to 11th and 12th, this place really has the look of a look and feel of a, a small liberal arts college because while we have requirements in math, science, English, history, language, you will see um, you will see the ability to choose the courses that fulfill those requirements. So um, it's sort of a powerful thing, and you'll see that we really want kids to slowly take on their learning. Um, one of the nice things about what we do private school like ours is every, you know, every student that comes back uh, says they were overprepared from an academic perspective. Um, the one thing we have to key in on is that they get so much attention. We have to remember, we have to continue to help them to be independent. So that's uh, sort of what we're doing with, as, as we work through that. So um, 
So a couple different things I'm going to show you. Um, again, I'm, I'm sporting my Columbia Prep athletic shirt here today. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, we're very proud of the athletics. About 65% of our kids are involved in um, at something for a, a varsity sport here at Columbia Prep. Um, but this, it's not it's tantamount to um, – fact that we also a lot of those students are also involved in the arts and the theater and technology so um I'll, i'm gonna i'm gonna take a quick break uh, not a break but uh, i'm gonna show you a quick video about the arts program uh that we have here at the school and then i'll continue to take some more questions uh, let me share my screen hopefully everybody can see that and tiffany if you can just let me know if this is you hear it? It's perfect. The public believes that knowledge is best created through the transformation of experience. We offer project-based experiences to expand the student's mind, body, and heart. Together, teachers and students challenge each other to become and create what is yet unknown. Using a combination of theatrical investigation and practical application, students of all levels and backgrounds explore the classical and contemporary concepts. Through collaboration, students build working relationships with their peers and faculty. In classes and in performance, we encourage students to take risks, to develop strategies for overcoming failure. Students develop confidence and resilience, giving and receiving regular feedback. We challenge our students to reach a level of mastery in one or more skills set by practicing, presenting, producing, and performing. And as they respond and connect to one another, students are empowered to become agents of change. The Studio Art Department believes that our students should understand how the arts enhance our world and enrich our lives and appreciate the positive impact the arts have on all communities and cultures. We strive to develop in each student the understanding that art is accessible and approachable through a range of disciplines, hands-on experience, and the acquisition of effective problem-solving and critical thinking skills, opening the door to future study, collaboration, and creation. Our students come away with a deeper understanding of the principles and elements of art, the effective incorporation of technology, art theory, and history, and the ability to discuss the formal elements of art with knowledge and objectivity. Students then develop the artistic language and tools necessary to express their ideas effectively and the experience and confidence to apply these principles to their work. They also learn to understand and appreciate the importance of collaboration and support a positive community by maintaining an overall respect for the craft, the studio spaces, the materials, and the opinions of their peers, as well as developing confidence in working toward their goals with discipline, commitment, and independence. The Prep School Music Department prepares students for a lifelong relationship with music. The creation, study, enjoyment, and promotion of music as a cultural force enhances their lives and the societies to which they belong. Music is a fundamental part of the core curriculum. We offer a wide variety of classes that inspire students to explore and create. In addition to traditional instrumental and vocal classes and ensembles, our use of the latest musical technology allows any student to have an entry point into the world of music creation. All of our students are provided with real-world experiences, performing as live musicians at many school and community events. We invite students to engage with the music through active listening and help them develop and express their opinions about the music they encounter. We seek to answer the difficult, if not impossible, question, what makes music good? We teach students to value music and to understand its place within the arts, society, and the human experience. We familiarize our students with the vast array of careers in music creation and music business. As faculty, we ourselves strive to be role models for our students by fostering our own passions and performance opportunities. Our goal is that all students can learn and enjoy music making experiences and understand their own potential as musicians. Um, I have a couple more, uh, one or two more things to share with you, but I guess at this point, maybe I'm going to see if I can answer some of the questions that I've seen um, coming up as we go through this. Um, so a couple things, are there admission exams for K? 
Uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, I just want to make the, the kindergarten, we do not have an entrance exam. It's, it's effectively based on interview, your school report, um, you know, it's both parent interview and, um, and child interview. Again, that's going to be a little bit different as we go through the, some of virtual pieces of that, but there is no entrance exam as there were, you know, five or six years back. Um, uh, I think Ronaldo Alba asked, we have, are there any uh, activities, programs, key classes dedicated to developing a student's ethical judgment? The answer is yes. Um, we have, uh, there's a number of different programs. So one of them is uh, what we're going to start with uh, peer leadership. Um, so one of the things that all, uh, we have peer counselors and social counselors involved in issues classes, um, is specifically uh, regarding their sort of ethical judgment, ethical um, choices, um, and also online responsibility. So online responsibility is a big portion of what we do, but also being sort of uh, activism, um, our MECA group, uh, which is our multi-ethnic uh, multi cultural awareness group, um, does a, is a big advocate for um, utilizing uh, tools of social justice for, for the good of change. Um, we send a number of our students and teachers uh, to, to uh, the conferences around the country. A bunch went to Seattle this year to talk specifically about um, social justice and, and sort of ethical understanding. Um, we also with the Dean program, which I think we, we mentioned earlier, all of our students meet with their deans uh, once a month to talk about anything sort of social emotional pieces, uh, relationships and ethical judgment um, uh, pieces uh, that they're responsible for. So um, there's a number of those different programs. What is the school's relationship with the Columbia University? So we no longer, um, Columbia Grammar, which was then, the reason it was Columbia Grammar was because based on Greek and Latin, um, what they noticed back in 1764 was that a lot of the people that were going to Columbia University, which was then King's College, um, didn't have the requisite skills uh, needed for a uh, university level education. So Columbia Grammar was created to, as a, a uh, feeder directly into Columbia University. So everybody who went to Columbia Grammar, everybody went to Columbia University. In the late uh, in the mid to late 1800s, um, with the emergence of a number of different universities, a number of students wanted to go to some other universities, but since Columbia University was subsidizing Columbia Grammar at the time, they said, you have to come here. Students want to go a different place, so they since they severed the relationship in terms of the, the payment, but we kept the name. So that's where we have, we've become stayed Columbia Grammar and Preparatory School. Um, any other questions I can, I can answer for you guys as you go through this. Uh, okay. So a couple of things I wanted to mention. So, uh, we do have, uh, I got some questions about the, uh, the athletics. And I, I guess I skimmed over athletics. We have a number of different athletic programs. It's sometimes it's easier to set, tell you what we don't have, uh, which is we don't have uh, football, but we have everything from uh, in the fall sports. We have soccer, volleyball, uh, cross country, um, uh, tennis. Um, in the winter, we have swimming, ice hockey, Basketball, uh, basketball is sort of a huge sport for us, uh, both girls and boys. Um, there's winter track, um, and then there in the spring there's I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Baseball, softball, lacrosse, um, golf, uh, I guess track and field, and a number of different. I'm, I'm missing. I'm sure I'm missing something else, but those are the sort of the um, the sports we have. One of the other differentiators for Columbia is our ability to have clubs. So there are over a hundred clubs to choose from. And what happens is clubs occur during the day. Now, so we are, we work on a nine, 
called, we call channels, but they're periods, nine periods a day, five of which are guaranteed to be taken, at least five by your sort of core academics. Um, we have PE, which is a requirement up until 11th grade, although if you're playing a sport for the school, you get exempt and have a study hall. We put everybody through electives, the, an arts rotation, uh, technology and robotics, um, but then there's a, one channel is designated for clubs and we work on a six day cycle. So what that means is every six days, we just repeat itself every six school days and you can choose up to six different clubs and they range in uh, what type of club from academic to sort of benign from everything from you know math team and, and debate team and uh, science and uh, you know robotics to magic club and juggling and sports debate um, and there's obviously there's a number of music clubs and some improv comedy clubs and if you if you're interested you should go online there are a number of our uh, to our website and see the different elective offerings and that, that's just clubs the the electives are all there too and the, the electives come in the form of from every subject area so if you can look at from the math science history um english language um in the arts and technology and performing arts visual arts uh music across the board so that that's all all there um is it possible to transfer from a private school kindergarten to your school? It is possible. Um, we don't generally do uh, transfers mid-year, um, but it certainly is possible to transfer from a private school kindergarten to our school. So I just want to answer that question as it came through. Um, I mentioned the internship programs. Um, the other the couple of big signature programs we have, the chess team is, is sort of one of the signature programs we have and we start kids uh, at the chess program is as young as kindergartner garden we have uh, sunrise chess for kindergarten it runs all the way through to um to senior year we currently have the number two chess player in the country uh here at columbia uh they went they went to the nationals in orlando and placed third in the nationals this year um so what are common entry point grades? Well, the common entry points are kindergarten, sixth grade, and ninth grade. I would say kindergarten and ninth grade are sort of the biggest ones. We take, you know, so in kindergarten, somewhere between 40, about 40 kindergartners, 40 to 45 kindergartners. And in ninth grade, it's similar, about 40, uh, 40 ninth graders. Sixth grade, we're looking closer to about 10, 10 to 15, probably closer to 10. Again, with anything else with attrition, um, there is and and you know there can be uh, availability for spots um, at at each of the different grades. We generally don't take any twelfth grade applications because it's just it doesn't make much sense in terms of we don't know the child and it's hard for us to sort of help them into university college process. Um, the other thing is from a college process, and you know, some of you may be interested down the road, some of you are already looking, depending on where you're coming in for, into, but the, uh, we have a, a, a large college office, uh, starts in 10th grade, we take the entire uh, 10th grade, sorry, the entire, entire 11th grade and the first couple of weeks of school off to see a couple of different universities that, are, that might, to give them an understanding of types of schools to look at. So usually it's um, usually it's like a small school, a large school, and 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 sort of an Ivy League school probably, which is, runs the gamut. So this year we went up to Cornell, Syracuse, and Colgate to just give the kids sort of a flavor of the different types of schools, what they would be looking at, what questions to ask, programs to ask, just to give them an idea. But you know, if they're down and they go to a big school like Syracuse and say big is not for me. Okay, so maybe then Michigan might not be for you as a big, you know, in terms of big schools, or maybe the reverse is true, or whatever the case may be. Um, we also do a number of different trips. Again, uh, how that will will play out in the fall and then all of next year remains to be seen a little bit. So I, I imagine some of those trips um, may may be, you know, manifest in a, a little bit of a different way. 
Um, the average class size in the grammar school um, and the prep school, so let me just ask the, the grammar school, generally you're looking at, so I mean, let me just, I guess, back up. With, in kindergarten, we look for about 20 kids per grade, and there's usually three teachers in the, each class in kindergarten. So what'll happen is once you get to third grade, it moves actually um, will come down to about 17. Um, but then now you go to two teachers instead of three. And then once you get to the, the well, the middle school is about the same 17 and usually, but you're moving to one teacher except for a certain math. Some of the math, um, math and science classes have team teaching going on with the lab work and science and just to, to oversee some of the math projects. And then in the high school, the most you'll ever be in a classroom is 16. Uh, it's actually closer to average of 13 to 14, but again, it's one uh, teacher in this per subject area. So we're ending the session. I guess, I guess I'm getting the 510. If you have any last minute questions, please, in the chat. Yes. All right. Well, listen, I, you know, the, uh, of course, uh, I want to thank you guys for, for joining me, uh, listening to me. I hope, I hope it provided with you some, some good information about Columbia Grammar Preparatory School. Um, certainly look forward to meeting you guys. I will say if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one with me, you can go to our website and our virtual admissions website now allows for, and there's also, um, you can meet with uh, Carrie Salvatore is director of admissions and enrollment management, myself, middle school and prep school. And I can, I can talk to, since I have kids in the grammar school, but also Janet Barrett, who's the direct, uh, the grammar school admission director. So please feel free to do that. Um, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be holding those hopefully through the rest of the month of June. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm sorry to cut you off, Thomas. Um, I just want to let everyone know that if you have a next, a next session to go to, uh, it's best if you go to uh, now after this, um, after you leave this. Um, and just like let people, I'll just let you know that um, we well, thank you so much for your time and for coming here today. And we hope that you were able to gain as much information as possible. I bet Thomas can um, fill you in and anything else. Again, if you have any last minute questions, you can write them in the chat, and because the session is recorded, um, we can find a way to um, answer those questions if need be. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, you guys. All right. Um, Tom, I made another session um, for the, I made another um, Zoom link for the next session um, that starts at 5.15, I believe it starts at, yeah, 5.15, so we have time. So I should get out and go into that Zoom. Yeah, we can get out and get, go into that Zoom. I'll open it now. I'll, I'll, I'm going to open it close to the time because I don't have Zoom premium. And I mean, a lot of them, are, Zoom has been wavering the 40 minutes, but just to be safe, I just wait until it's like around that time. Okay. Um, if you want, um, I can open it earlier um, if you prefer. No, that's fine. I, I can I can manage. It's, okay. it's fine to be 5.15. I just wanted to, yeah, I was more concerned because it seems like it's working now. That's what, you know, I was, was going to play the video of the same reason. That's why I was like, I, I have a feeling it's because I had my Bluetooth. Yeah. On, I, that, that's, which, that was the thing I wanted to test, but now, now I think I got a hold of it. Oh, um, perfect. One, thank you. Is there anything else you think I, I, I can key on? Um, not that I, not that I would, uh, know, cause okay. I think, I, I think that like, 
with everything that you've talked about this far, I think it was really good. I think that um, I've seen like all the people who were involved, we were talking, it seemed like it went pretty well in my opinion. Um, so I, I don't know, I, I liked it, I enjoyed it. Um, and I also was thinking at the end, which is why I, like, I did the whole 10 minutes so that if people individually want to speak to you, cause you know some people don't want to speak in groups. Yep. Um, that's why I did the whole 10 minutes. So like, that's great. So that people can like, if they want to speak to you individually, they can. Right. Sorry to put you on the spot when I did that. I was like, I hope he's okay with this. <laughs> oh, fine. Uh, I can roll. I can roll with it. Okay, perfect. Um, also, I know you're recording this. Will you share the recording? Yes. So I'm, I, I can definitely do that. Um, I'm going to email it to Jessica and I'll CC you on the email. Perfect. I, I'm recording both sessions and I'm going to, and I have to email them to her anyway. So I'll email to them at you as well. Great. All right. All right, so I will leave this um, meeting now, the session, the Zoom link, and then enter into the other one. And then we'll go, at, it'll all start at 5.15. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, no problem. Great. See you soon. All right, bye. bye.